Sister, hold you near. Those times you were filled with fear. There's a friend who's with you to stay. His name is Jesus, he's the way. Jesus, hold me today. Christian nation. Lord, I realize there are evil forces in our world that would like to take away our freedom and take away all the privileges that we enjoy here in our country. God, we pray for our president. We pray for our elected members of the Senate and the House. We pray for our representative leaders that, Lord, that you will give them wisdom and that they will seek your wisdom, Lord, for all of the decisions that they have to make. And God, right now, for someone who's watching or listening, who has a very personal prayer request, Lord, I pray that right now that they'll just lift up this request to you. And God, that you in your wisdom and in all your power and able ways will enable them, Lord, to have the peace that passes all understanding. We ask all this now in Christ's name. Amen and amen.
We love the Bible passage in Ecclesiastes 3 that talks about that there's a season for everything. There's a season for everything under the sun, a time to be born, a time to die. We like time. We appreciate time. And guess what? We're running out of time. Uh, individually, we're running out of time. I don't know how long this world's going to be here. Isn't, th isn't this a beautiful world that God has made? Um, uh, this world is here, and um, who knows how long the world will be here. But one thing's for sure, you and I are not going to be here forever. I won't have the opportunity forever to stand here and to, to come into your home and to preach the gospel because life is short. Uh, life has a time limit. Now, I was reading that uh, the average man lives to be about 76.1 years, and women live to be about 80.1. I think that's extremely unfair. I don't understand that. I don't know what men are doing wrong that women are doing right that guys only get to live to be about 76.1 years and women get to live to be 80 81 but we're not doing something right we're not to living right praying enough or uh, we're not uh, I don't know what we're not doing but we're not doing something right but anyhow it is what it is and uh, our lifespans are shorter and so uh, if you're 76 today uh, according to statistics your time is about over now you may be blessed with longevity you may already be 80 or 90 years old I don't know. One of our dear friends over in Indiana, she's 99 years old and goes to church and she greets people and sings and dances about every day and exercises and works in the garden and it's just a ball of fire. But she is extremely unusual and very blessed with, uh, I guess, good genes and definitely longevity. But time, what about time? And what are you doing with your time? And how are you using your time? Uh, time is running out like the sands of the hourglass. Our time is passing by. And uh, how much time do we have left? How much time do we have to, to love people? And how much time do we have to work? And how much time do we have to build our retirements? And how much time do we have to enjoy our retirement? You know, people today working 67, 70 years old, and then they die at the age of 76. Uh, how much time is that to really enjoy a retirement? It's not that it's not that much. And so you need to think about all of that. Retiring at 66 or 67, dying at 76. I'm not trying to be gloom and doom. Maybe you'll live to be 80 or 90. But think about this. Even if you do live to be um, 80 years old and retire at 67, that's not a lot of years to just enjoy retirement. So think about our time. Now, I know that oftentimes we think we have plenty of time. Do you remember that story in the Bible in Luke chapter 12 where there's, uh, Jesus is telling the story about a man who said, I'm going to uh, pull down my barns and build greater barns. And I'm going to say to my soul, so thou hast uh, many goods, much goods laid up for many years. Now take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry. And God said to him, you fool, <laughs> you are a fool. Tonight your soul is going to be required of you. And that man died just like that. And apparently he had a lot of riches laid up. I mean, he had a big retirement account. He had saved money. He had invested well. He had a large stockpile of cash and goods and riches. And he was going to kick back and really just have a grand retirement. And he died just like that. You see, that happens to so many people. We're so ready to just kick loose and enjoy the world and enjoy retirement years. And God says, nope. Nope, that's it. It's over for you. Now, your time is out. You see, time, your time is not always on our side. Time runs out. So don't be like the man in the Bible in Luke chapter 12 who just said, well, I'm going to tear down my barns and build greater barns, and I'm just going to keep getting fatter and fatter and richer and richer and all that, and I'm just going to keep on living and living and living. Uh, no, you may kind of want to redeem some of your time. You may want to cash in a little bit of what you have and utilize the years that you have and uh, do some things for the Lord and help some other people out. Uh, enjoy your children and grandchildren, enjoy your family, go someplace that you've always wanted to go, do some things you've always wanted to do, uh, get up and enjoy the, the sunshine, go fishing, play golf, uh, you know, take time to pursue whatever hobby it is that you like to pursue and spend some time just loving God and appreciating Him for giving you the opportunity to live. Time may be on your side for right now, and if you do have some time left, 
let's hopefully we'll make it through this broadcast and we'll make it through the day uh, and that we'll live many years. I hope that you have many, many years ahead of you. But just in case you don't, my friend, give your life to Jesus Christ. Ask God to come into your heart. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, and you will be saved. He will give you eternal life. And when, then when you're ready to die, you're ready to live. Paul said for me to live as Christ and to die as game. When you're ready to die, you're ready to live and you'll live out your years here. And then the Bible says to be absent from the body is present with the Lord. So utilize your time today. Time, yes, uh, may be on your side, but time may not be on your side. And therefore, redeem the time, utilize the time, and be a good steward of the time that God has given to you. Matthew chapter 28 verse 19, Jesus commissioned his disciples to go into the world and preach the gospel to every person and that's exactly what they did. They went one on one, two of them would go together, but they would go and share the gospel of Christ personally to other people. I wonder in this current age what they would do. Would they go home, get on the internet, social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, Yahoo, Google? What expression, what form of communication would they use today? Television, radio, all this. 
all the all the stuff that we use today and I know in the current age in which we live today we're very grateful for the internet for Facebook and different ways that we can present the gospel and many people today who are stuck in their homes because of social distancing really appreciate being able to to hear uh, their pastor preach or see what their church is doing uh, via social media so it's not anything that we're against we're certainly appreciative of every opportunity that we have but the disciples they did not have what we have today so they had to go when you became a Christian how did you become a Christian did you become a Christian um, over Facebook or did you become a Christian uh, watching television maybe you watch we're watching Billy Graham or maybe you were watching some other uh, inspirational minister of the gospel uh, or maybe a pastor uh, you heard a pastor on television but maybe when you became a Christian someone sat down with you and it explained to you how to be saved maybe someone sat down with you and, and shared the good news of Jesus Christ and the plan of salvation and how to receive Christ and how to be saved. Or maybe you actually went and you sat in church and uh, you heard the good news of Christ preached and you responded and you said, I believe and I accept Christ, I receive Him. I think we're really missing the personal touch today in our churches. So many churches are dying. In my particular denomination that I, uh, where I belong, uh, we've lost over a million uh, members over the last 10 years and losing about 100,000 people every year. And many denominations and churches today have lost hundreds of thousands and some millions over the years and our churches we keep building nicer buildings and having fewer people and and taller steeples and fewer people and we see just a decline in membership all over the planet and so many churches there are some churches doing great in Africa and uh, Nigeria and Korea we hear about great explosive churches there and we do know of some churches in our country who are doing extremely well and growing in different communities and we thank God for them but I wonder if we're not missing today that personal touch of one-on-one -on -one evangelism Jesus said go into the world and preach the gospel and that means that that I need to go and you need to go and we need to do our part and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ I love the story in Luke chapter 19 where Jesus was passing through Jericho and Zacchaeus invited Jesus to come into his house or Jesus wanted to go and be in Zacchaeus' house and Zacchaeus was glad to have him and, and Zacchaeus had a great time of uh, fellowship with Jesus and Jesus loved being with him and uh, Zacchaeus' life he was a tax collector and uh, was not very well accepted in his community despised actually but Jesus shared his life with him and Zacchaeus became a follower and a believer in Jesus Christ because Jesus took the time to have that personal involvement with him. I believe it will change the ministry of your church. I believe it will change the dynamics of what's going on in our churches today if we have more personal outreach. When was the last time uh, someone knocked on your door and invited you to church? When somebody knocks on our door today, it kind of bothers us. Uh, you know, who is it? Is it the, the UPS guy? Is it the FedEx guy? Is it the mail person? Is it a, a politician handing out something? We've gotten to the point today where uh, we're not really appreciative of uh, people just knocking on our doors. When was the last time someone knocked on your door and invited you to his or her church? Someone invited me um, to his church here a few months back and I couldn't believe it. It had been so long since someone just personally invited me uh, to come and, and just you know sit in the church and, uh, and hear the message preached and it was in another town and, and I went and even gave an offering. I really appreciated it. Uh, I appreciated being invited. When was the last time you just personally invited someone to attend your church and to see what's going on and to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. And when was the last time you shared your faith? When was the last time you told someone else what Jesus Christ means to you? There are hungry people out there who are so hungry for the gospel. They're beat up, they're beat down, they're worn out, they're tired, they're dealing with depression. Many people are fighting uh, all kinds of addictions, drug addictions, alcohol addictions. People are struggling financially. People are almost in dark holes and in despair in their lives. And more than anything else, they need the good news and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Will you share it with them? Will you tell them? If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, then why don't you tell them? 
I, so oftentimes, people who are members of churches, they call up their pastor and they say, Oh, pastor, uh, God laid so-and-so on my heart. And uh, pastor... Uh, I think you should go talk to him about Jesus. Well, well look, if God laid so-and-so on your heart, then you go talk to them about Jesus. Don't, don't call your preacher rep to go talk to them about Jesus. You do it. If you know the Lord, you have something within your heart and life to share about what Jesus Christ means to you. Every person who knows Christ, every believer, every person who is a recipient of the gospel of Jesus Christ has something to share about what Jesus has done uh, for them what Jesus has done for you. Uh, so we're thinking about the word go. Go and share the good news. Jesus told his disciples to go into the world and preach the gospel. If you're his disciple, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, who's someone you can go to? Is it a child, a grandchild? Is it a friend? Is it a neighbor? Someone else in your family? Uh, someone down the road that's hurting? You may be the only Jesus that that person will ever see. You may be the only Bible that that person will ever read. Uh, you may be the only good news that that person may ever have. So Jesus said, go. Please, let's go individually, personally, and do what we can to share the good news of Jesus Christ. <laughs> times we couldn't find the will to live another day but we opened our eyes and we realized we had to find a way people let us down some walk away always one who will stay take hold of what's left give it your best choose to live dying don't stop trying to breathe one more time and when you're hurting one thing is certain you gotta try again and don't quit living cause they walked away and don't give up cause of what they say don't stop trying for a dream come true what do you got to lose people let us down some walk away
Proverbs 4.23, hear the word of the Lord. Above all else, guard your heart, because everything you do flows from it. Protect your heart. Protect your physical heart. Protect it by exercise and, and what you eat and routine, uh, physical checkups. Take care of your heart. Take care of your inward being, the thoughts, your mind, what, what goes through your mind, what goes through this body. Protect your heart. Guard your heart, the Bible says, because from, from the heart, from where our thoughts are and where we're thinking flows everything else. Jesus told us, love the Lord your God with all your heart. Put your heart into God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. In other words, put your heart into what is good. And God is good. God's created the world. God has made you. God has given us an opportunity to live. God put us in this world. God will take us out of this world. It is appointed unto man once to die. God is a good place to put your heart. Uh, God wants what is best for you. And that's why Jesus said, just love God with all your heart. When you love God with all your heart, it impacts your entire day. It, Im it impacts your friendships and your relationships with other people. Uh, it has a great impact on the work that you do, uh, your thought processes, whether you're up or whether you're down, your depression, your despair, or whether you feel encouraged and happy and delighted and joyful but when you're loving God with all your heart it colors everything about your life and about your world love God with your heart and guard your heart the one thing that Satan wants to do is to get hold of your heart and to mess up your thinking and mess up uh, your beliefs and where your commitments are how you spend your time what you do with your life all of that Satan wants to gain control of that and mess up your heart don't let him do it. Guard your heart and just keep loving God. Preach for God, sing for God, live for God, work for God. Uh, just serve Him. Regardless of what you're doing, if you're working in the coal mine or the factory, or you're out here um, cleaning uh, the highway, or whatever it is that you're doing, working in aviation, working on the railroad, uh, whatever job that you have. If you're working in the grocery store, the hospital, if you're a policeman, whatever it is that you're doing, uh, uh, just put your heart into it and love God and allow God to work through you. I think God can use us in almost every situation in life if we have our hearts in tune with Him and allow God to control the center of our thinking. So I don't know where you are or what you're doing today. I don't know what your joy level is. You may be totally miserable in your life. You may be filled with despair, depression, hopelessness. It may be that you feel like that you've done things that you can't be forgiven of and, or you can't forgive yourself or you just can't get out of this deep, dark hole that you're in. Begin to center your mind and your heart on God. Uh, God can do anything. 